right, and it's the next day after uh, getting that windshield uh, kind of squared away. And uh, the only thing I had left was there, there was um, what looked like to me grind marks were from whatever they were doing up here. They kind of dug into the top of the uh, windshield wiper mount. So uh, I kind of moved ahead without you guys, and I just took a piece of metal that was like a half moon the line you know a half moon I, I took that with a magnet from the back side brought it up to the hole tacked it and then kind of filled it and half ass kind of ground it i'm not going to get too particular with um making it perfect with metal because that's what bondo's for right so i did that one and then i kind of poked on the other one which didn't have anything showing through and that one did the same thing it was just very thin so again i i uh, did the same thing with the back of that and uh, welded it up and gave us something to uh work with that's uh metal uh, solid metal anyway so I'm kind of thinking of what I want to work on next. I figure I just kind of keep going on the front skin and um, we made him an accident when we were taking it off the trailer. We were a little overzealous and we kind of uh, lost it off the ramps a little bit. Whoa, come on back. And uh, you see where that lip is right there. Uh, kind of bent out. Then you can see some rust holes. I don't see if it's going to go fuzzy again. Yeah, that. So it's got a little bit of rust down that bottom edge, that bottom lip. Uh, and the same on the other side took a hit so I figure we'll go and take a wire we'll get up on the lift and we'll take a wire wheel to it and we'll see what kind of pokes up out of the bottom there I ran a magnet over it, it seems like it's all metal uh, so it shouldn't uh, well, I'm not gonna say anything <laughs> you know where that goes and uh, the center of it I know I can see from the back side it's got a it was dented a little bit nothing terrible and uh, the uh, uh, You've got a couple of uh, Bondo holes from the inside, you know, where, where the Bondo kind of squeezes into it. But I think I'm going to leave that alone. It's been like that for a long time, and the inside does not get moisture behind it, so it may not have an issue. And it's been sitting like this for a long time, and I don't notice any kind of bubbling or anything around it. So when we sand it down, if that's an issue, we'll dig into that and weld it and rebondo it. If not, we're going to leave well enough alone. The door, uh, I ran the magnet over this section right here. And uh, I thought this was going to be a big blowout, but it is not. There is metal behind it. It looks like they just went with uh, either a different kind of Bondo or a different color Bondo of some sort. And uh, I probably took a hit, it looks like, right in this area. And they roughly pulled it in and then filled it out. Uh, filled it in with metal more. I didn't look there, though. I have a feeling that's metal, though. Uh, anyway, so I'm jumping around, OCD's kicking in. Let's get it up in the air, let's go look at that front, see what we got, and then uh, prepare as needed. All right, so I took uh, the flapper disc and kind of just ran down the uh, bottom edge, and uh, I also just took the ball, the, uh, the hammer and the dolly, and just kind of try to knock that seam flat again. Go look and kind of see what we got. And then here's where, kind of, when it came off the trailer, it took a hit right here. Um, other thing, <laughs> these holes, they're not supposed to be there. They're, uh, again, somebody cut some metal out. They probably had a rust hole and just said, okay. So they needed to be addressed anyway. Uh, this is all the factory skin, and this is where the spot welds are on the bottom lip going across it. Uh, I, I don't want to get up into here. They make a patch panel for this. Anyway, I don't want to get up into here. Um, you start seeing where the bumper is. We're going to go outside in a second and look at another bus, and we're going to go see exactly where that line is, but I have a feeling the bumper probably comes right around here. So if I can keep all my work down below, nothing's gonna show no matter what anyway. Um, because sometimes you work with long flat pieces of sheet metal, yeah, get some heat distortion to it. Most of it seems to be from the midpoint over this direction, if you can't see how it's, it's floating. You know, the, the, the rivet, the um, spot welds aren't even, uh, there's another place right there too. You know, the spot wells aren't even doing anything. So, you know, that's gone all the way across. And it probably goes right to good metal, probably right about there, uh, right above the seam. The windshield leaks, the water comes down the inside of the bus, and then it, it collects down in here. And there actually is a couple of drain holes, but you know what happens to those after 48 years, they seem to get clogged. And uh, the material kind of backs up, sits behind here and rots out right with the, you know, with the two pieces meet. And then, you know, of course it runs to the corner, so the corners really blow out. So the fix for it, I'm thinking of, we'll just make a patch for there and uh, maybe just get a strip of metal. I don't know. 
but you'll probably bring it maybe to right here. We'll do a, a, a section here. Maybe do a piece all the way across here. And this, I know, although this side does not look that bad, I bet you if you beat on it with a hammer, you're probably gonna go find some uh, uh, punkiness that's in there too. So we're gonna go take the camera out. Actually, you might as well go. You might as well go for a walk with me. By the time I shut it off and turn it back on, we can be there. It's a uh, cold front's coming in. We're supposed to go down to negative six tonight, I think. So I stocked up on a bunch of pellets. I'll leave the stove in the garage going on low overnight. So it's not so bad if I run up the next day. So I can see right now, you don't see any of that whatsoever. That whole thing is hidden. That bumper, I'm sure that one's pushed up a little bit, but that comes right to there. So I figure about a half inch from that. We'll call it an inch, we'll call it, say, it's on a bit of an angle. So that drops down about an inch, so. So none of that will be seen. Right, so I figure I'm gonna try making uh, where it's cut out on the end and probably right up to that first rib. This uh, where it kicks back up again in one piece and I figured to go do that probably my best bet would be to make a paper doll. So I just took some uh, construction paper and uh, we're just gonna try the old rub trick. Give us witness marks where everything is. Maybe we should have a little bit dirtier hands, huh? That should be pretty good. I'm just leave the paper up there, weld the paper to it. So I think that should do it. Yeah, so I'm gonna go uh, whittle that down into uh, some kind of shape and then lay down a piece of metal. We'll carve that out in a piece of metal and then we'll open it up and see if we could stuff that in behind it for the lip. And uh, yeah, again, we're not gonna see any of that because the bumper's gonna, bumper's gonna come right to here, but uh, doesn't mean we have to be total hacks, right? All right, so let's uh, get that. All right, so I uh, whittled out a patch, oversized for now, something like that, and uh, did a tracing of where that is so I know to try to stay within bounds of that. So I figure what I'm gonna do is we'll, we'll make a slice right around here, right above where the rust is, and we'll see what kind of metal we get. And if we need to, we'll go further up. But for now, we're probably just gonna go with that. So let me just draw a line to give myself a, a rough idea. Like that. Old years. Let's go make some noise. Felt pretty good. You can you can tell by the cutting wheel. Um, you know, if it goes through real fast, that there's not going to be anything there. But I think that that should be fine. So I'm going to go get the uh, air chisel back out, and I'm going to chisel this uh, these uh, spot welds off and get that piece out of the way and clean it up a little bit. And we'll try fitting that new panel up in there and see what it looks like. You ever get the feeling that you just kind of shouldn't have? <laughs> uh, I peel I peeled off that bottom lip that you see there. And uh, here is what the problem be. Can you see my fingers behind that? Can you see that? That's the problem. Where it makes the fold, there's uh, not really anything left. So yeah, can I weld back to that? But what's the sense? There's really nothing behind it. So, you know, how far in do you want to go? Of course, there's nothing right there at all. So I was thinking that, um, I'll show you the bottom. Back 
and they don't look terrible from there, but you can kind of see somebody put a patch right, right close up to you right there. There's some holes right there. So I think I may try making a strip and that we'll just make it go underneath that whole thing. Yeah, so we'll go from right here all the way to where that uh, that frame rail kind of meets it. And it'll, you know, I, pro I probably just make it an L. So it'll be an L and then down. So it'll be probably an inch wide by whatever this is, 3A, something like that. And uh, we'll make a straight shot. I can bend it on a bender and then I'll take the, the shrinking tools. And I'll see if I can walk it to match this profile. And if I can, then I'm gonna go and slice it, this off right here. I'll probably leave the top stuff there. Um, and I don't know, I don't know yet. I'm gonna make the, pa I'm gonna try making the panel first and we'll go from there. And uh, we'll see how much of this we cut off. I, you know, you can kind of keep on going. So, <laughs> where do you stop? Back up at the windshield. All right, so let me, uh, let me get to making something. And a little aftermath. I think about a half an hour. Multiple bends in different directions. I love those tools. I figure it's a good place to kind of like learn on that. Where you know it's not that big of a deal, but um, be surprised. Actually, it, it's fairly easy. I just take a marker where kind of I need to, you know, bend it one direction or another, and I just kind of like draw on the face of it. On there, I just you know. Go back and trial fit. As long as the old piece is there, it gives you something to work with. Let's see if we can get the snap in. So that's pretty much it. So I'm gonna go and mark on the bottom so you can see where it's fatter. It's fatter here, and then I'm a hair over on the back side. But I figure once that front lip once this front lip is cut off, I'm just gonna get rid of that. And this comes that much forward, that should put me right on the corner with this. And uh, these little indentations are for where the bumper brackets come through, but I think for now, I'm gonna leave them alone till I fit the bumper and then, I'll, then I can just kind of cut them back. So I'll put this piece on, we'll put that skin on and we'll uh, move on to the next one. But uh, let's see how this kind of uh, gets tacked into place. I gotta clean up, probably throw it in a sandblasting cabinet now and, Get rid of some of that rust before I start. But yeah, I definitely could have done the windshield pieces on my own and uh, gotten a better fit, I think. It's a, it's much more malleable than you would think it is. All right, let's get to work. All right, well, that's all welded in and ground and no turning back now. Again, this panel goes up behind the other one, up about that high and uh, then I just kept one as our weld that I just kind of feathered the top down to the bottom so when we go to do the fill it won't show. Yeah, it looks decent. Kind of falls the lines nicely. It's a little wavy right here in between the tacks. I kind of started squeezing it together so it's got a low spot right there. But hey. If I were perfect, I'd have to pay me more, right? The bottom, the back side, is uh, betterer. This is all the, that's all the, uh, the new piece I put in, I put in. Uh, it does have a fairly large hole right there. It feels like seam sealer or some shit. And I thought about, I can come back, I can make a little panel. But I actually think what I'm gonna do is probably just, uh, I may even just kinda Cut that out to be a nice neat hole. And I'm gonna shoot oil all up inside there, barn chain oil, after I am done. And uh, leave a hole in it, so if anything does get in it, it's got a place to go. Cause that's what takes them out in the first place. And a couple of pinholes there too. So, rightfully, I should have kind of went and made another bend and came up on this side. But uh, once you do that, it makes it so you can't put the shrinker on it to make the turn, so. So be it. Well, at least I got this. These holes aren't here anymore, right? And I use the spot welder I get on the bottom seam to, to seal that up. Make it factory-like, right? So now all I gotta do is repeat it on the other side and in the middle. I think in the middle, this part might be all okay. No, 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 spoke too soon. 
Nice see that straight there. So we'll see what we do there. Maybe we do the same. Because it actually makes it easier because if this is all rusty, it makes it hard to, uh, to, to pinch weld to it anyway. That's where um, flux core comes in handy because it's good for burning into that crappy, crappy stuff. So again, we'll probably do the same. I'll probably make a, a piece that goes across the backside here. Why not? And then yeah, the same over there. Get up. I got my recliner set up on the on the double on the double angle there. Someone's asking about my pellet stove. Uh, how's it heat the garage? Does pretty good. Um, I go when I kick it on high and I leave. Usually get a bite to eat, and uh, it'll get the garage from like 30 to 55 or 25 to 55 in about an hour. Um, once it's going, you can go to medium or low. Right now it's on medium. Garage is 62. And as you can see, it's seven degrees outside. Uh, I'm not going to work in here tomorrow, so I'm going to shut it down. And uh, on high, it'll burn a bag of pellets in about eight hours. On low, it'll last about 24 hours, and then, of course, you know, medium somewhere in, a, in between there. So, uh, you know, once it's going, you can leave the thing on low, it'll keep the garage. Uh, Again, 60 plus uh, for the duration. If I was going to be out here tomorrow, I'd, I'd leave it on low, like I did last night. But uh, I'm going to give it a break for a day and run the one on the inside of the house. So yeah. Oh, I don't know. Seems like almost a. Uh, Almost a waste to do in there, but screw it. It's behind the bumper. It's good practice. It ain't going anywhere, right? It allows me to put off all the sanding. <laughs> and then, yeah. Usually, I, I see, always see the, um, the passenger side of vehicles is worse. You, you can see the ones that are rotted on the passenger side more. You could tell were, were city cars. I mean, they were, they were parked on the street you knowing the curve of the road always hasn't leaned like that so all the water always runs to the passenger side it causes more damage on that side than the driver's side my uh, my opinion anyway you know what they're worth all right guys well this may or may not continue i'm going to shut it down from here and uh, if so you're going to see more of this if not have a good night next day it's a balmy 26 degrees in here and uh Keep moving, stay warm. more of the same as far as the my hearing protection off see if I'm yelling it's like more of the same as far as uh, that edge being gone right there so I really should cut and bend a new piece up for back there too and again this all starts because the windshield rots out the windshield wasn't rot the windshield seal holds the rubber holds water in the rubber between the fins. It ruts the metal out. It runs down the front of it, comes down to here, then blows out the bottom of this. So. I hear it here leaking. 
anyway, so probably my best bet is going to be the same as make a piece for that and bend it into place and uh, have the two pieces that we're going to do in the nose and then we'll jump on to the end. So let me uh, get to carving out a piece for that. All right, so my bender is only good for up to 20 inches across and uh, I would need a 24 inch piece so we're going to make it in two 12 inch sections so I'm going to cut myself out two strips one and three eighths and this is a, uh, a wood bandsaw slowed down with a metal blade on it to cut metal. That's kind of loud. So let me go uh, clean them up with the sandblaster and we'll knock the rust off of them and uh, then we'll go bend them up with a 90 degree and then we'll use the shrinker stretcher to kind of form the form that we need. And let's go bend a piece of metal. How cold my jack is, uh, the fluid internally is not flowing like it should. Right. And there's one. I'm gonna knock out another and let's go shrink it. Alright, I just need a very slight curve going like that. So I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it. I'm gonna just give it a little tweak going right down the edge and then just test fit it. Do my best to repeat it, but I'm not. Let's go see. Come on now, come on. Not too shabby. We'll make one more of those, shall we? All right, so I got that center section pretty much all tacked into place and I did not um, spot well the bottom lip yet. I'm gonna let that float so you get the light out of your way. And then the back side, the bottom sides, whatever you wanna call it. That's all done and tacked into place too. Uh, so I figure I'm gonna go move out to this outer edge here and I'll do the same I did on the other side We'll slice this back Cut off the front make the panel for the bottom tack that into place And then we'll do the skin on the front and then I'll just weld everything on one shot And uh, I think it might be uh, better for uh, I can kind of like sneak one behind if I have to or move one around a little bit if I need to and uh, Set of uh, you know weld this, the ends together and then try to open it back up again So uh, let me go get all this cut away and uh, make some stuff Okay, so just kind of hack the upper section out of my way just to kind of see what we got and then uh, made our, uh, our bottom piece before I rip that out of there and uh, I would say that is a pretty good facsimile both directions of the bend to match it. I love using that shrinker stretcher setup. It's so 
it just makes life so much easier instead of beating stuff with a hammer. If you go past the curve a little bit, you go back, you can kind of fudge it back and kind of everything's nice and controlled and even and doesn't get dense in it. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go get uh, that uh, piece out of there. There is a, actually, in between the front and the back, there's actually another structure that kind of comes down and grabs it. And it's kind of like a framing, uh, you know, Maybe, I don't know, if you're in a crash or whatever, that kind of is supposed to save your, your feet. Anyway, you can kind of see where the seam is there. They would weld that piece onto that and then the skin onto there. Well, on the other end and in the middle, um, it was kind of rotted out in the very bottom. I'm not that concerned about it. On this one, I may try to catch it. I may try um, taking the air hammer and separating these two seams because this one looks pretty beefy. And if that's the case, I'll, I'll tack it there and on the other lip. But if not, it'll be the same as the other. It'll just be attached on the inside skin and the outside skin. No pebble beach, remember? And I just get done tacking that second piece on. And of course the back wall's done. And then I, uh, of course, just slipped up underneath it. Actually, it was the same pattern from that side. Just flipped it over, made the same piece of metal. And um, it's slightly uh, taller on this end. I actually missed it by a hair on this side, but all right, so what? Uh, but I'm gonna go and again, spot weld the whole bottom. And I'm just gonna grind it with a flapper disc till the two pieces are even again. I seem to find that that makes the best um, uh, continuity between the two skins, you know? So. And then on the back side, it's just kind of tacked up into place. Looking good. All right, so let me go get that heavy ass spot welder out and I'm gonna go spot weld that whole bottom seam and then I'll, I'll finish weld the top and grind it and make it look pretty and that kind of stuff and I'll turn it back on. All right, I'm gonna go from the back side first because the light will blind you guys. I can shut it off while I'm under here. So it's looking pretty good. Um, again, I'm gonna run some seam sealer over it. I got a, an area here I am going to cut out and make a patch and one on the other side. I know it's dark over here, but uh, right there we're gonna cut out. And we'll make one for there too, and the rest is just gonna get seam sealed, and I think probably what I'm gonna end up doing, I'm gonna come back and drill a couple. Hey, two holes there, two holes in the middle, and two holes on the end, and we'll shoot oil in there, and we'll allow it so no moisture can kind of get up behind there again. But she looks decent, let me, uh, light off so that when you look in the other direction you're not looking at a light try to get up without making groaning noises oh man there you go and then from the front it's got done grinding it all off yeah, it looks nice again you know I'm not that concerned about the appearance of it it's behind the bumper and this is just gonna get uh, covered over with uh, filler and sand it down. It'll all be nice and flat. Uh, again, this one, this metal kind of goes up behind here. And I plan on shooting all oil back in there to go save everything behind it. So I'm talking about weld through primer. Uh, yeah, I can use that, but for what I'm gonna do and, and all the rusty metal that's already behind there, uh, oil or bar and chain oil to be exact, will be my best, my best bet. And it's, you know, it's, it's camera's gonna pick it up but it's level it's not not all wavy and lumpy and all feels pretty good and then I of course went with the, the sander of the flopper disc and I just kind of leveled off both seams so if you look at it, the seams they are level to each other so I think they look pretty good for something you're never gonna see and you know it's just not filled in uh, covered up with Bondo and paint it and then have it a year later just kind of blow out again that should last a good long time as long as it stays dry and stays oily behind it it'll last longer than everything else is going to crap out on it eventually right so i got those two patches to do but i'm going to go in and make a cup a, a cup of coffee and uh, take a break read some of your comments and then come back out and uh, make those two patches and maybe that'll be it for tonight maybe not it all depends on how i feel all right, guys, everybody, thanks again for uh, encouraging me and 
taking the journey with me and uh, writing all the comments. I like, the I like to read people's comments, good or bad. So, uh, till we meet again.